Have you ever been told you have a dad bod? Well, this is a big epidemic in the US. The so-called dad bod. Almost a few years ago, we've made the dad bod normal, cool, sexy. That's just not right. You know, and that's just empowering people to make really, really poor decisions about their food, their diet, their lifestyle, because they're making it acceptable and cool that they have a dad bod. It's killing you. Most likely you have something called diastasis recti, which pregnant women get is when the abdominals go like this. Your abs usually come in as the belly gets bigger, it expands and you see the separation and eventually it tears or it just sits all the way out here spread so it'll never come in because there's too much food, too much inflammation, too much garbage in your body. So no matter how many sit-ups you do, no how many sprints you do, it, it's, it's not gonna change. You know, you can't outwork a poor diet. You know, and when I say diet, it's not a fad diet where I'm on keto, I'm on paleo. Eat the right foods. There's plenty of them. They're available. I show you how to get them. I show you where they're located. I show you how to cook them and make them. They're so simple in five minutes. I made sure that I was able to get healthy by being the laziest possible. 255 pounds, I was pretty lazy. I'm still kind of lazy. When I go to the gym, I honestly, I don't sweat. I walk on the treadmill for 30 minutes at 2.8. That's like a leisurely walk. I'm usually in the section with the old people walking on the treadmill, you know, and that's when I listen to, I don't listen to music. That's a whole nother story. Um, I usually just kind of stroll along and I'm doing it for my heart rate and just to be active. That's all because sometimes we get stuck inside and we can't go outside and hike and walk in nature and be in the sun or whatever you know, due to work, whatever. So I make sure I'm up at 5 a.m. before the sun comes up, I have the most energy. I go to the gym, I walk on the treadmill for an hour and I just kind of clear my mind, stretch, go home, start the day. Very simple. I have a life too. I go to bed at nine. There are things that happen throughout the day that don't allow you to sleep for five hours but I had to change all those things so I was able to do the right thing so I could stay healthy. You know, instead of like partying all night and then missing the gym, instead of eating garbage throughout the day and counteracting all my hard work, you know? So I'm in the gym a lot and I see a lot of people and they're like working hard, 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 sprinting on the thing, huffing and puffing, lifting heavy weights. And then, you know, I just keep an eye on them. You know, I'm a chiropractor, so I always offer them care and help. And they all come in with kind of like the same thing. My back hurts here, 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 and here. Usually they'll say my back hurts here, here, and my neck up here. Sometimes it's an emotion. Sometimes it's the food you eat. Sometimes it's your posture. But what I'm getting at is these people are in the gym working so hard and they get no results. You know, like, it, it, I, I hate to say it and like, whatever, I was one of them. You know, I would go every day, I'd work out all hard, I'd look big, but I would never see that significant change in my body. And I don't understand why, and these people don't really understand why. They're like, I'm on my goal, I'm trying to, you know, weigh 185 in the next, you know, 10 weeks, I'm running seven miles every day. Um, lifting heavy, I'm going in the sauna and then sometimes I go back and I do my sprint workout and then I ask, okay, well, what do you eat throughout the week? They're like, oh, I eat pretty clean. I don't get into it with them. And then they're like, yeah, on Sunday I have a cheat day. I kind of eat what I want. And I'm like, oof, that cheat day is destroying everything. And then probably the food you're eating throughout the day are not proper for nutrition or the way it should be. It's probably taken from an Instagram influencer about eating meat all day or, you know, eating this much rice, this much chicken, this much broccoli, you know, and eat that four times a day being a calorie deficient. And then you'll lose weight. If you burn more than you take in, you're going to lose weight, obviously, scientifically, but like, 
for real life, this is not sustainable for anybody, you know, and nobody's trying to, unless you're prepping for like a bodybuilding contest, nobody can really live like that and eat that kind of food, you know, especially coming from a heavier weight, trying to drop down or just get healthy. You know, you have to make a full lifestyle change and like a full 360. Um, you know, and, and I, I show you how to do a lot of it on the channel and on, a, on the Substack. I'm doing it daily so you can see what it really looks like. I post my recipes, the calories, the macros, um, the shopping list and the price of the food. So it's, it's, it's beneficial if you're going that route. And honestly, it's not for weight loss. It is to repair your body with the most nutritional food you can possibly get and eat the most possible food you can eat. So this is like realistic, like you're not going to be hungry ever. You can eat anything, any day, all day, every day. And there's a million options and it's easy to get, easy to do. There's no real excuse because I made it so simple that anybody can do it because I was the laziest and I had every excuse in the book but I made it so easy that it's like, honestly, anybody can do it and it's almost effortless. And then eventually it just becomes your routine and your lifestyle. You know, I get a little crazy about it because I've seen the benefits and I know what the downside is because I've experienced it. I've had, you know, the cancers, um, you know, I almost had heart attacks and like, you know, I had some really nasty stuff and I had to hit rock bottom to wake up or else honestly I would have never done it it was good enough I, I weighed like I got down to 200 you know I looked good enough I felt good enough I couldn't do everything I wanted to do I couldn't play soccer anymore I still couldn't run you know when you're that heavy you can't run you know so like I didn't even attempt to run in the gym I was like how am I going to get this done without running because everyone's like oh you got to run 10 miles to lose weight and then you got to be in a calorie deficiency like how on earth are you going to go be fat, run, sprint, do all these huffing and puffing workouts, break your, you know, you know, go hard and like, you know, work hard every day and then come home to eat like less food just to obtain weight loss. I'm trying to work less, eat more food and obtain weight loss. And it was possible and get gains. Got them. You know what I mean? And it's not stressful. It's not anything out of the ordinary. It's not something you cannot do. I'll show you all the information on the Substack. Just go read the page, you know, and there's a million posts on there about every day's workout, um, all the calories, all the foods, where to buy them. You know, there's even like shopping lists that you can put onto Wii or, you know, Instacart and just, I tried to make it as simple as possible. And this is more for my patients. So I don't have to repeat this information every day when they ask. I just say, read this stuff follow along, do this, that's your homework, and see what happens. Can't hurt or just start implementing a little bits and pieces of this. Um, and then the whole other reason, um, you know, I do it is not for like fame, it's not for money. This is all so that my whole goal as becoming a chiropractor a really long time ago was I wanted to be in a profession after a while, after I've being retired and just making tons of money and just relaxing and having free time, I realized, and I always knew I had a higher, higher purpose. And my higher purpose was to help people. You know, for some reason I can reach people, I can spread a message. And the more people I talk to, the more people I can influence. So like, how can I get in front of the most possible people? So I said, okay, if I become a medical doctor, that's just not something I'm into. What can I do? Oh, I can be a chiropractor because they have the same philosophy. So this year or the past couple of years, I became a chiropractor. Now I'm able to see 100 patients a day in five days. That's 500 people. And I can tell this to, and I can reach them. That's a lot of people I can reach. And then my whole next goal was to be able to go on stage. And this was a huge fear of mine, public speaking, and I had to break through it and I still can't do it. Um, it's difficult. There's all these, yeah, I'll talk about that next, but you know, the fear of public speaking is really tough. Um, I'm just going to start another video about all that. 